to do a face replacement without using Roop. Now, if you've used Roop, you're going to realize that there's, because of its bit size, there are some issues with detail in the final face. If you have a detailed body and you have a Roop face put on it, it's very easy to see the difference between the two. Now, I understand the reticence on the uh, Roop creator, at least what he said was his reticence, to prevent people from just creating things of other people. Now, face replacement could be a very bad tool if used improperly, just like most things. In this case, you could make a synthetic version of somebody doing all kinds of different things or worse, put them into situations that would be embarrassing to the person that you used. And that's why, if you go back to my other videos, creating your own character is the best thing that you can do. Now, when they did that fitness model, you realize that they created a new person. They synthesized a new face so there would not be any kind of overlap with anybody who exists. That said, we're going to take a look at the IP adapter models today. Now, this is using Comfy UI as opposed to the uh, stable diffusion that you've seen prior. And the first thing we're going to do is load the IP adapter model. And I'm going to try to make this big so that, uh, unlike some of the other people I've, I've seen do these things, it, it's easier for you to see what's going on. I'm going to use the plus face adapter because all I want to do is replace the face. They have an in, uh, encoder for the clip vision as well. And then we've got our normal checkpoint things. And so far, I found Epic Photogasm to be the best at this. I haven't tried them all out yet. Some of them are just horrible when it comes to replacing the faces. Now we come up here to the IP adapter, and you'll see that it takes the adapter itself, the clip vision, the image, which we'll get to in a minute, and the model that we just talked about, which is the Epic Photogasm. Now down here, you're just going to take a load image and you're going to put in an image of somebody. So this is where you load your image in for it to process. Now, one thing I want to say up front, something that every gamer knows, over here you have the save button, save often. If you make a tweak, save it. Give it a name of some kind. This is going to save it as a JSON, but it'll allow you to go back later on and see what it is that you did but more importantly it's going to allow you to make a tweak and if you don't like it just go back to the prior version and then you can start again and the reason i'm going to say that's important is we've got weights noises and we have masks you can adjust your weight and your noise, and that's a simple change. You can just write those down on a piece of paper. But other things, like if you were to change out your encoders and things, in or your uh, text for your clip, at a certain point, you may have made enough changes that it's now a little difficult for you to get all of the changes in that you wanted to get. It's easier to just replace it. And if you're walking down a path and you're making a series of changes and you save it at each step, it's easier to just go back to the prior step. Now, we're not going to go over all these settings. I found that 0.8 and 0.5 were good for what I was doing. Now, I also added a Laura in here to add more details. Took out the clip strength, left it at zero, uh, left the model at one. Then, of course, we have the K-sampler, and the Laura is going to plug into that, as are our prompts and our latent image description. So here's our prompt, woman walking toward the camera on a snow-covered path, full body, wearing a winter parka and boots. 
Negative was blurry, horror, extra limbs, and I jacked that up because I had had some images that uh, came out with extra arms and hands at certain points. The VAE that we're going to use is this one. I'm going to load a different VAE than the default that comes in. All right, this is a 840,000 EMA pruned. I'm using the DDIM and the DDIM uniform. Again, these are things that I've played with and gotten good results from. You should only change one or two things at a time. If you're going to change the sampler and you want to change the scheduler if, and they're paired, it's probably a good idea that you do the two of them together. But again, it allows you by saving it to go back. You can set this to fixed so that you don't have to worry about what the randomness is going to do and you can actually see what the image is. The latent goes into samples, the VAE goes into the VAE to code, and then our image goes into here. Now I recommend that you use the save image extended and the reason for that is it allows you to give each file name a prefix it allows you to give the folder name a prefix. Now, as you do these things, if you want to do them as different trials, you can put them in there as different folders and then go back and look at them later. Now, why would you want to use Comfy UI over, let's say, the other stable diffusion uh, GUI that I showed before? This is much faster than the other setup was it seems to give relatively good results so far now this is just doing a face replacement in a small prompt notice i didn't have to add in any extra steps there's the whole thing as you can see in one piece we just had the normal 768 by 960 give me five images again I always do multiple images because sometimes you're going to get a good image and sometimes you might get a bunch of bad images. By letting it run and then picking out the images that are good and bad, you can get better overall results by culling what you get off of these things. So this is the normal setup just to replace the face. And you still get prompts. So all you're doing here is just adding in a, a picture of a person and letting the IP adapter handle it. Now let's take a look at what we can do in terms of the final output. Let's let's take a look at what the images came out looking. Okay, this is one of the earlier ones. Now from a distance it looks good and it kind of matches the person that we had, but I'm a retoucher and I get into the details and you'll notice that the nose just does not look right. At least it doesn't look right to me. It, it doesn't seem to match what I envisioned this person would look like facing. Now, granted the picture that was used was at a bit of an angle. We get rid of that. Now you can see we've gotten a little better here. All right, the nose looks more realistic. And I think it did a really good job of the prompt, which was a woman walking toward the camera on a snow-covered path, full body, wearing a parka. Now, I will point out that I did not specify the pants and boots, and some of the images came out sans pants. Uh, she was wearing the parka and nothing else. So just keep that in mind that when you're making out the prompt, add details to it. And then this one I think is probably my favorite of the bunch. This was a simple image, um, but it's got a nice three-dimensional feel to it. But if you look at the hand, the hand got corrupted there. 
Uh, the fingers are messed up. The thumb is way too long. She has too many fingers on one hand. But the face came out good. And this was using the Epic Photogasm. Now, the other thing, when you're going through and doing your images, make sure that just like when you were using the Stable Diffusion, you save the content of what you did. That is in the, and that's the other reason I recommend using that save image extended. There's a save job data that goes with it. Be as uh, full as possible with there. It even allows you to save your models, the sampler used, and the prompts. So that way you can go back. If you've got some good images, you can look at the job that went with it and pull that up. Use those settings for your next excursion into replacing faces. So that's what I got for you this week, along with the caveat that always make sure that you've created a new person when you do it and save, save, save. Uh, just come up with some good titles for what you're going to do. I mean, it could be experiment one, experiment two, but whatever makes sense to you to save these JSONs so that you understand where it was used and you can just easily go back and replace it, go back to a previous step that you were in. If you're going down and you think this is a good path and you realize that it's not, you can go back a couple of steps and start over again. And the other thing to keep in mind here is once you've got one done, go back and rename it. Now, the file itself, there's nothing inside of it that you have to worry about renaming. All you have to do is change the name of the file. And perhaps you keep all your experiments together in a particular folder. Remember, you got that folder name prefix. Keep your experiments in there. And then when you get one that you like, grab that uh, JSON that you saved, rename it to something that makes sense to you, and put it in a spot for a, uh, these are the JSONs I use type of thing. These are the models that I use. So that's what I got for you this week. And I hope everybody has a good holiday. And I'll talk to you guys all next week.